I'll give you one more example of my life. You know, I was captain of India till 2006, 2007, when I was asked to leave as captain and, and continue as a player. Actually, I wasn't even picked as a player. Uh, when in 2007, when 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 Greg Chappell came into the Indian scene and and he believed that I I was not good enough to captain anymore, and then I lost my place in the national side for six 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 months. When I was a grown-up boy, then I was 34, 35. I was not not a young boy uh, at that stage. I was quite independent and grown up. My father, my father, who was obsessed with the game like all fathers are. You know, we cricketers had families where our parents were obsessed with the game. I used to see Rahul Dravid's father uh, quietly come to Bangalore to watch test cricket. So I asked him one day, uh, I was captain, and I asked him, Uncle, why do you come so quietly and sit at the back of one of the stands and watch Rahul play? He said, you know, every time there's a test match which happens in Bangalore, Rahul Dravid make, makes sure that he tells me that I don't turn up on the cricket field. And I asked him, why? Why does he say that? He said, every time he saw my face, at uh, somewhere in the stands, and if I'm seeing, sitting in a VIP stand, he felt the pressure. So to watch my son play, I would actually sneak in into a membership gate and sit right at the back and watch my son play for the country because that's what I lived for and that's what I dreamt for all my life. So it's the same thing with my dad. My dad was obsessed with the game, and all he knew during my growing up period was about, about me playing for the country. So when I got left out during that period, and I was sitting one Sunday morning, I was sitting one Sunday morning with him and, and he came up to me and said, you know, you've played so much of cricket, you've played almost 350 games for India. Uh, it doesn't matter even if you don't want to play, don't get to play one more game. What you've achieved will always remain in the history of, of, of Indian cricket. I listened to him uh, that day, I didn't utter a word because, because I knew where he was coming from. You know, he, was, he, he would see me, uh, you know, not enjoy that period of my, of, of my cricketing life because uh, I, was, I didn't know how to get back into the side because uh, when you realize that you know, you're, you're not being selected for any, any opportunity is not because of your skills, then it becomes a very difficult uh, uh, scenario for you. you know, even if you score runs, you will not be selected. Even if you play well, you will not be selected. So it, it, was a, it was a very sensitive part of my life. The matter finished that day and, and, we, and we went off. Uh, he came back to me again three or four days later. He came back to me and said, Saurav, uh, have you decided what you want to do? Because I don't enjoy waking up in the morning and reading the newspaper with the headlines that with every Indian win, it gets tougher for Ganguly to get back into the side. So I listened to him for a while. And then one fine day, I decided to tell him. I said, listen, I'm 33, 34 years of age. Uh, I want to play the game. Uh, I, because in sport, you don't play forever. There's an age and after that, even if you're good, uh, even if you have been the best in the world, the game goes away from you. So I said, listen, I've got another three or four years of my life uh, uh, and uh, I want to give it a try. I don't know whether I'm going to play again. Uh, I may not play again. The chances are that I will not play again. But I don't want to sit at the age of 40 when I, even if I want to, because of my age, I can't pick a cricket bat. I don't want to talk to myself that, listen, Saurav, when the chips were down and when, when people asked you to leave, you did not make an effort, effort to succeed and come back and, and see whether you were good enough. I went through that phase. I, I came back into that squad uh, after three or four months and then I went on to play for the next five years. The day when I finished, I had a very dear friend in the side, uh, Sachin. Uh, I don't get to see him much these days because he lives in Bombay. Uh, the day I finished, he said, sort of, uh, this is the best I've seen you play in the last, in your entire career, the last three or four years, was the best I've seen you play. The reason I say this to all of you is that, you know, along with success comes failure. You know, failures are sometimes harsh. Uh, failures are sometimes difficult to accept. But sometimes when... <clears throat> When failures come in and you get, and you get uh, thrown away or you get separated or you get pushed away, you know, you realize your best. Uh, we live in a world, we live in a system where, where we, 
we need an arm around our shoulders, you know, whether it's our parents, whether it's our office colleagues, whether it's our bosses, whether it's our best friends, whether it's our husbands, or whether it's our wives. We need an arm around and say that, listen, no, no, good will happen. But sometimes when all those things go away from you, you actually, you actually discover your best. And, and every time I speak, I say that those three or four years uh, were the best time of my life because I'd realized that the only way I could play the next game was if I scored runs with my bat. So when we, when we uh, bring our children up, when we bring the most dearest people in our lives up, it is important to educate them in, in the right manner. You know, I, I heard the various speakers before me talk about how the kids should be handled, what they want, what they don't want, and uh, you know, the mother behaves differently, the father behaves differently. But we also at the same time need to accept that it's a world which is very, very competitive. It's a world which, where, which teaches you things the hard way. Uh, you've got to be affectionate, you've got to be kind, but you also got to be aware. You've got to be aware of the situation, you've got to be aware of, 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 of the ways to succeed. Because if you don't know how to succeed, uh, you, will not, you will not realize failure. And if you don't realize, if you don't get failures in life, you will not realize the importance of success. I've seen that in my career, and most of you have seen uh, in your, with your experiences in life, that, that one goes along with the other. Uh, one of my best friends asked me one day, sort of, you finish playing, you do so much things in life, you're probably busier than, than, uh, than, uh, than what you did when you were playing cricket. How does life feel now? I said, you know, it's great. You know, there is, uh, I enjoy what I do. I do so much work. Uh, the finances are not a problem. Uh, but the biggest thing which I miss is that pressure at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. When I used to wake up, uh, get ready for a morning test match or get ready for a morning one-day game or a day-night one-day game because I knew that I will be judged right throughout the day. And by the time I get back in the evening, I will either be successful or I'll be a failure. Either, I'll either be a, a star or I'll either be, be thrown away by the selectors. That circle of life, uh, that, that high and that low of life is very, very satisfying. So it's important. I look at it in a different way. So it's very important that when you, when you grow in life, when you, when you teach your children, uh, whether it's in school, whether it's in sport, of, of, of leading life, it's very important to make them understand that everything comes hand in hand and you don't enjoy the other if you don't understand what it's all about. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's important to have pressure. It's important to have pressure. And, uh, and I can bet you with my experiences over 15 years, pressure is something which you get used to it. You know, after you go through it for, for a couple of years, for three years, four years, it is something which you will start enjoying because your system, your body, your mind gets, gets adapted uh, to the pressures you face in life. And you realize that when it goes away, that, you know, how, how challenging and how happy and how satisfying it was. Thank you.